Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to some of you in the U.S. Uh, this is Daniel speaking. Uh, welcome to this seminar, and we usually take a few minutes to wait for more people to join in. Uh, while we are waiting, I would like to tell some of you to consider muting your microphones and Probably some of the videos are better off. Thank you. Hi, Paul. How are you? Our speaker for today, Paul, how Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can get you. Great. Uh, we are waiting for some more people to join. Maybe let's give it two more minutes before we start. Uh, you may try um, using uh, no headphones. Maybe your voice can be heard well because it's not that clear now. Okay. I can try to do like this. Can you get me clear? Yeah, that's better. Okay, thank you. Welcome. 
Okay, I think now it's we are good to start. So once again, welcome everyone. My name is Daniel Ijembawazi. I am a research fellow at the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management. And today we are happy to, to have our speaker, Mr. Josephat Paul Haizilba. He is a PhD student in biology education at the Center of Excellency for Innovative Teaching and Learning Mathematics and Science. That is hosted at the University of Rwanda. He holds a Master's of Science in Education from the University of Dar es Salaam, that's in Tanzania. And he's an assistant lecturer at the University of Dodoma same country, Tanzania. And he has a prior experience since 2017 in different academic projects as an assistant uh, researcher. And his focus in research is on enhancing environmental knowledge and attitudes among pre-service biology teachers. And that's in Tanzania and he uses inquiry-based learning. So we are happy to learn more about this as he speaks about uh, enhancing pro-environmental behavior for trans transforming environmental sustainability. So the floor is yours and you're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Daniel. Uh, maybe for clarity, I will go for audio so that uh, I think there is no problem if you can get my audio, I can just share my slide. Yes, I um, can hear you clearly. Okay. Can you see my my screen yes okay uh, dear members as it has been introduced to you my name is joseph at uh, the title is as it has been indicated so with you i'm going to share issues related to environmental uh, pro-environmental behavior and so broadly speaking we also talk about environmental uh, sustainability. So I'm going to link the two uh, issues, pro-environmental behavior and um, environmental sustainability. Uh, the presentation will be organized in five sections. Uh, this is an overview. So we'll start with a background that will recover uh, contextualization of some of the key concepts, and that is uh, pro-environmental behavior, which is a key in our uh, presentation, but we also have environmental sustainability. That is also another very important construct to be uh, discussed. We'll also talk about why we need to talk to discuss about these issues. And the second part, we uh, have to look on the issues that need our attention. And uh, on this section, we we'll also have to look on the issues that are threatening our environment or ecological resources. Uh, the third sections will discuss on the determinants of pro-environmental behavior. Uh, most, uh, in, in particular, we talk about 
internal and the external factors. And we have to look on the recommendations and the finally we'll have a discussion and a conclusion. So to start with, uh, there is no single universal agreed definition of pro-environmental behavior. There are different ways of how it has been uh, defined or have just extracted um, the most uh, relevant according to uh, my presentation. So to speak, uh, I will just try to define this according to what I've extracted from literature in very simple terms. So uh, the first aspect is concerned with the reduction in environmental burdens. That means trying in every effort uh, in reducing environmental consequences or environmental uh, problems. But on the uh, next side is trying to add value or improve the environmental quality. But also in some other aspects, it has been uh, contextualized uh, in terms of purpose-oriented, whereby environmental conservation is the main aim or the primary goal of pro-environmental uh, behavior. But some others have also, the same author, uh, Chris, have also looked at this, that some other pro-environmental behavior are being conducted without a predefined goal. For instance, uh, someone can decide to walk from one point to another, which is a very short distance, uh, instead of driving. So with this person has no uh, predetermined purpose, but in the most uh, environmental terms, he has contributed to environmental quality by uh, uh, remitting uh, driving, that means a uh, reduction in carbon emission. On the other hand, we have environmental sustainability. Uh, this one, uh, logically, is originated in human forestry when uh, the emphasis was a uh, protection of the forest or uh, trying to see that uh, the harvest should be less than the, 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 the production. In, in another way, when you are harvesting, the, the rate of harvesting should be less than the rate of replacement. But later in the 1987, after it has been broadly used in different countries, uh, the World Commission on the Environment and Development presented to the United Nations a new definition that included the sustainable development. And with this, sustainability was aiming at also looking at the broader expansion of the population and the struggle to achieve uh, some economic status or economic growth. But as we achieve economic growth, we should also strive to sustain the environmental uh, issues that we should not disturb the uh, environmental aspects. So broadly speaking, uh, according to these two authors, Schumacher and Schultz, it was concluded by defining uh, it should be focused on social and economic changes that are necessary to attain ecological stability. So broadly speaking, we can just refer to environmental sustainability as the struggle or the efforts to ensure that as we interact with the environment, we should make sure that whatever uh, we use in our interaction with the environment should not lead to overutilization of the resources available than they can be replaced. And this also made uh, these two authors to conclude by giving this statement that all the existing environmental problems can only be solved if uh, all the human actions or activities that are being carried out within the environment, uh, the rate of extraction or the rate of using the resources, when the total or the over, uh, the, the, the sum up of all the activities as compared to the uh, total of the, the replacement, they have to uh, sum up to, 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 to the, an overall, indicating that the less, the less the, the resources have been utilized, uh, the more the replacement will be indicated and this will lead to uh, working towards achieving environmental sustainability. But why do we need to discuss about environmental sustainability? This is the most important thing which we have uh, to look at. 
Uh, and this is also what we can term as impactive discussions, discussion that can lead to government. Uh, and we cannot just achieve this if we are not looking at the roles that's being played in the environment. So we can just look on the aspects. If you read my abstract, uh, I have uh, extracted so many issues related to the forest and someone can uh, argue, ask why am I talking about uh, uh, forest in the most specific terms, but in general, a title I'm talking about environmental sustainability. And this comes because a forest contributes heavily on the environmental sustainability. Just by looking on the statistical figures, uh, you can see that near 50% of the global diversity is within the tropical forest. But also, we have seen that uh, 28,000 plant species have been identified as providing medicinal support to different people. But also near 80% of people in, uh, in Africa, particularly, uh, depend on a medicinal plant for, for, for health support. But also these play a very important role of climate regulations. Uh, we can also talk about the clean water in terms of uh, different uh, uh, ecosystems taking place within the, the, the forest. We can talk about the hydrological cycles, uh, uh, job creation. If you read the report of FAO 2020, you will see that nearly uh, 86 uh, million jobs have been created and uh, within uh, the forest products. Uh, but also you can uh, note that plants provide almost 80% of diet worldwide. And also you can also talk about the, the coverage of the, 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 the forest on the land surface. 31% uh, of the land surface is covered by the forest. But also if you read some of the, the, the literature, this percentage ranges from 29 to 31. Some literature will talk about 29%, some others will talk about 30, some others will talk about 31. So it ranges between uh, 29 to 31. So that means the other remaining percentage uh, from uh, like 59, uh, 69 to 71 is occupied by water bodies. And in these water bodies, you see that uh, fresh ecosystem, uh, fresh water ecosystem uh, occupies just 15%, while the remaining is covered by ocean and the glacier or, or, or ice, uh, ice parts. So to speak, this is the, the, the component of the, the, the environment that we have to think about when we are talking about environmental sustainability. But also you can see that uh, natural lakes and the other water bodies, the extent of coverage. So when you are trying to discuss uh, these, uh, this uh, uh, content of environmental sustainability, we can just think of this role or the percentage of coverage or the percentage of how these things are important in supporting our rights. So what is so important or what has to, to, to be, uh, what, 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 does, what does this mean or what needs our immediate action? Uh, the situation is alarming as I have titled it, but in literature, we find that human actions play the most significant role in most of the environmental activities, environmental uh, problems that are happening today. For instance, agricultural sector alone is responsible for 73% of the world uh, deforestation. This is according to a file report and uh, some other scholars as I have indicated. But also this is different. We have uh, huge or, or, or commercial agriculture, but we have also subsistence agriculture. They have different percentage of contribution in the, uh, in the deforestation. Or we have settlement that contributes to almost 10% infrastructure. That means the road constructions and the other things uh, also occupies other 10%, uh, while remaining uh, covers the other 70% remaining. So you can see all these are uh, human-induced activities that take place within the environment, and this needs our attention. As you can see, the situation uh, is alarming. If we are to, to, 
to, to, if we are just to let this happen and continue to happen as it is with this uh, rate, that means all the roles being played by the, the environmental parameters will lead uh, to, to, to life uh, geopark. And then we have livestock activities occupy almost 30% of terrestrial land surface, uh, of which if these activities are to be allowed to continue as they are uh, progressing today, we are expecting that uh, more than 2% degree Celsius by 2050 will exceed. But according to Paris Agreement, it has been advised that the uh, degree Celsius or the, 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 the global average temperature should always be kept below 2 degrees Celsius or the rise should be kept to around or close to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So if livestock activities alone can contribute to 2%, then the achievements or the goals of the Paris Agreement cannot be attained. But we have livestock production uh, that also contributes uh, to, to 18% of carbon dioxide emission generated per year. But we have some other, almost 18% of, uh, of, of species found in the forest have been arrested by International Union for the Conservation of Nature that they are critically endangered species. That means they are, uh, they are vulnerable to extinctions if there are no immediate actions to be taken. Uh, on the other hand, we have some other activities like wildfire, have just given some of the few examples. For instance, the most cited examples is uh, Australia that has contributed widely last year. Just 2.7 million hectares have been disappeared because of wildfire. And this is three times larger than the Amazon band area within the same duration. But also in Africa, we have Congo that has lost almost three, uh, 300,000 hectares. Uh, so you can see how much these human activities are contributing to the disappearance of not only forest biodiversity, but also because almost near 50% of uh, species reside in forest. That means that the forest is being disturbed. We have also some other uh, bio uh, or some other species which are also being uh, vulnerable, exposed to vulnerability if there are no immediate actions. We have fewer wood or charcoal correction, mostly in Africa. Uh, by far, Africa is the largest contributor in greenhouse emission if we are to consider in terms of charcoal production. And this is because almost 80% of population in urban African uh, cities or uh, in African areas uh, residing in urban uh, depend on the correction or the use of charcoal or fuel wood. But we have also globally more than 800 uh, million people depend on fuel wood for energy uh, use. All of these try to indicate how human dependence or human activities within the environment can contribute or can limit the achievement of environmental sustainability. And then we have another contribution from transport, mainly road transport that contributes significantly. And this has recorded, according to International uh, Transport Forum, 24% of the global carbon dioxide emission is from fuel combustion. So that means uh, the more we use uh, the transport, the more we contribute to the emission of greenhouse gases, but also the more we interfere with the achievement of the goals to combat climate change. Uh, another issue is on the, uh, the water pollution, that is also 80% of municipal wastewater is raised and treated into water streams. That means we have different activities taking place within the municipal, the urban areas, we have industries, we have other activities in our domestic, we have hostels, all of these are taking place within the, 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 the context or the environment where we live. So when water is just raised and treated, then 
of this kind of uh, resource is uh, or poured without, and this goes to affect some other uh, species. But we have many contributors for water pollution, and this is human settlement, agricultural activities, as I have said, and we have industrial activities. But we also have some determinants of pro-environmental behavior. We cannot just talk about uh, uh, attaining environmental sustainability if we have not discussed what makes or what predicts uh, these environmental, uh, pro-environmental behavior. So in psychological research or behavioral sciences, these have been grouped into two main categories. The first part is internal factors, and the second part considers about external factors. But in some other literature, we find that there are also some, uh, another uh, variable, which is demographic factors. Or in some other literature, we find demographic factor being included within the internal factors. Uh, when we talk about internal factors, we have the motivation. Our motivation can also be internal and external. For instance, when we have to talk about interest motivation, uh, these can be considered in, in terms of uh, internal factors. But we have locus of control in some other psychological research. This is also called um, self-efficacy, the confidence of someone in doing something. But we have attitude behavior association, relationship, and how we interact with the environment. Here we can have uh, issues like affection, how do we feel about interacting with the environment, how do we feel about using the environmental resources and the other things uh, of the like. But we also have willingness to participate in different uh, environmental activities, uh, willingness to donate. Do we have, sometimes we may have resources to donate, but we are not ready. So this, these are internally motivated uh, factors which we can consider when you are talking about the the remitting or the, the sum of the, the, the factors that uh, promote or predict pro-environmental behavior. But we have, we have some other external factors. For instance, we have to consider about international correctiveness. We have heard so recently that the uh, U.S. is planning to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. While uh, the nations have agreed on how they can attain the Paris Agreement, uh, and that means how we can keep uh, the, the, the greenhouse gases so that we do not uh, uh, interfere with the climate change to the lowest limit. Some other countries, if they are not ready, this cannot be clearly achieved. Or we have some agree other uh, policies like education for sustainable development. This was initiated by uh, the United Nations. Uh, it emphasizes that uh, sustainability education should be integrated at all education levels that individuals or people should be educated or should be uh, provided with quality education that enables them to have commitment, environmental awareness, environmental attitude, environmental commitment so that they can perform or act in pro-environmental um, actions. We also have the IG, biodiversity targets, and this is focuses on the protection of biodiversity. Uh, it involves about identifying about the vasterous causes, uh, 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 laying forward the strategies on how they can be protected or safeguard uh, the areas or the, the pressing issues on the protection of our diversity and how they can be attained. If we are to look again on the sustainable development goals, uh, nearly more than 50% of all the sustainable development goals are focusing on the environment. Uh, specifically, uh, target number four, uh, which is talking about uh, uh, quality education, uh, uh, goal number four, which is talking about uh, quality education, target number seven, the same goal, is talking about environment. If we, uh, we are also to look on some other uh, targets, uh, like uh, target number six, talking about uh, clean water, uh, target number seven, talking about uh, NH, uh, clean energy. Uh, that means uh, people should be emphasized to use renewable and affordable. 
uh, energy, but we also have to talk about sustainable economic growth. And we cannot talk about sustainable uh, economic growth if we don't have a stable environmental parameters. This is target uh, goal number eight. Goal number seven, goal number 11 is focusing on environmental sustainability. If you go through all other uh, goals, 12, 13, and 15, you will also realize that they are all talking about the environment. So to speak, um, these are the issues, are the international agreements which needs collegiality and different uh, collaboration from different countries. But in terms of uh, external factors, you can think of environmental attitude. To what extent do we have environmental awareness and how also do we uh, promote this environmental awareness, not only in schools, but also in the community members, in the neighborhood and the other things of the like. We have political readiness. To what extent do political leaders or the government policies support issues of the environment? What kind of budget do they allocate to address environmental issues? Uh, but we also have priorities. We can have different priorities from one nation to another. And we have to think of how each country, each nation, try to address these uh, different environmental priorities. But we have cultural variations. Uh, we are coming from different uh, cultural background, and each of these uh, factors have influence on how we can value and act towards the environment. Some different studies have indicated the variations across nations, across culture, and the different other external factors. We have organizational management, for instance, in schools or universities, there are some issues which need to be prioritized on, 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 on the environment. For instance, how much do we care about uh, prioritizing a budget on the environment? Uh, dustbin, how, do we, how many dustbins do we put? Uh, how many do we talk about uh, water conservation? How much do we talk about energy conservation within the, 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 the organization setup? Uh, also, how do we put this uh, in, 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 in front of our discussions. But we also have another factor, as I have said, demographic factor, and here we have variations in gender, have variations in age, and we have variations in socioeconomic factors. Generally, there are some exceptions, but in a most uh, specific term, most of the research have indicated that uh, female tend to be more pro-environmental than male. There are some reasons, one of which is uh, that uh, uh, female tend to have uh, stronger environmental values or personal values in psychology than the, the, the women. There are some exceptions. For instance, when we talk about environmental knowledge, uh, women, uh, men tend to have more environmental knowledge than women, but women tend to be more emotional towards the environment than, uh, than the men. Uh, when you talk about age, uh, some studies have indicated the variations in age, uh, indicating that uh, uh, those people in the older age tend to care more about the environment than the young age. But there are some exceptions. For instance, when you talk about donations, older, uh, older people tend to donate more to the environmental activities than the young people can do. But we also have socioeconomic factors that can affect uh, what we vary about the environment. For instance, uh, what we buy uh, uh, about the, the, the environmental uh, and the other things of the like. For details, there are some resources that I have indicated. Um, what can we change? Or in other sense, what are the recommendations? First, we have to change. Uh, this is what we call ecological consumer behavior. And uh, uh, this is what in, in sustainable development uh, goal number 12, it focuses on uh, how can we attain uh, this. And in a most, a more specific term, some studies have indicated that just uh, depending on meat and dairy, uh, uh, contributes heavily on the greenhouse gas emission, particularly 40% in the Western countries. And like, for instance, uh, the United Kingdom targets it to reduce 80% of greenhouse gases by 2050. And just by adopting or by changing the type of uh, mirrors we consume, 
from meal and dal, if we are to, to opt for instance for vegetable and the fruits, we can just reduce 15% of green. for climate change. Uh, but if this has to be adopted globally, it can also uh, reduce the cost that have been planned to be invested for climate change by 50%. So we can see if we just change uh, our behavior of eating, we can just contribute significantly in the reduction of greenhouse gases and we can modify the climate change. Uh, the mode of transport, near 30% of greenhouse gases emissions in Europe is linked to transportation. So we have to review our policy on automobile, uh, especially like switching to liquefied natural gases that can not only reduce 20% of emissions, but can also uh, stop emission of other greenhouse gases like sulfur oxide. But we can opt to use public transport instead of driving our private uh, cars so that we can contribute in the significant reduction in the greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Uh, changing the form of energy, uh, mainly we can adopt it to use uh, non-carbon uh, energy or uh, less carbon um, energy, like for instance, opting for natural gases, opting for uh, uh, solar, uh, biogas, and other things of the like. Because just the domestic heating has been found to be contributing 80% of carbon dioxide only in the US. On global comparison, this is equivalent to 80% of the, the, the carbon dioxide emission. I also have to do awareness creation, have public talks, have seminars, outdoor activities, like trips to, towards the reserved areas, so that we can uh, motivate some of the individuals when they go to visit some of these places, they can be motivated how valuable they are, so that they can just uh, learn how they can protect them. But we have active involvement. Uh, when you talk about active involvement, uh, we can have some of the, 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 I've cited some of the examples, for instance, uh, in Rwanda, we have these two kinds, Uganda, where we have community participation almost every month, uh, the, 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 the last Saturday of each month, where uh, communities being encouraged to engage in different environmental activities, uh, but we have also car free day. These are examples of uh, active participation in, in contribution to environmental sustainability. But we have uh, tree planting activities because 60% of forest is required to maintain the required hydrological cycle. So this 60% cannot be attained if we do not plant trees. But we also uh, need to be environmental activists, support environmental organizations, and sometimes if we do not use uh, such as uh, power, we can just switch it off because the way we leave it on is the more we are contributing to towards the climate variability. But we can also have professional collaborations. We have different uh, uh, professions. Uh, if we are to attain environmental sustainability, we should not work in isolation. We need educators or environmental psychologists we need mechanical and electrical engineers. For instance, we need to design uh, sensors uh, in colleges and universities and different institutions where, for instance, if it reaches at uh, a daytime, uh, there can be some sensor which can detect the, 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 the bulbs which are still on and they can switch automatically off. And this not only reduce budget for administration, but they can also save the environment in terms of climate and the other things related to environmental sustainability. So we need to have an interdisciplinary connection between educators, ecologists, uh, policymakers, and the other stakeholders so that we can join hands together and see how we can uh, engage in solving environmental issues. Uh, it has been indicated that in most cases, uh, each group is working in isolation. 
ecologists are working in isolation, educationists are working in isolation, but we need to integrate uh, these professions towards the environment so that, that if we talk to each other and have a one collective way of uh, doing things. As I'm concluding, I'm appealing to you that while we are considering about the values of the environment, the roles that are being played about the environment, we have seen a very good uh, uh, role or significant role being played by the forest. We have seen to what extent the, uh, the, the water bodies uh, play about the environment. But while we are considering about the environmental uh, values, we should also take precautions of the side effect, such as not disease. We have seen of recent the emergence of COVID. We have uh, sometimes heard about uh, Ebola, which killed uh, so many people, mostly in West African countries. But we also have some other diseases like African trypanosomiasis. We have American trypanosomiasis, which are all have uh, forest origins, or they are directly related to the environment. So while we are valuing the environment, we should also think of how we can modify and learn to interact while we are avoiding the negative effect. Yeah. But last, or the call upon for our discussion is what are the models which we have to use? I can just give you the example of the most studies I've just visited uh, the scales which are focusing on measuring environmental attitude, behavior, uh, and uh, knowledge, uh, they are mostly biased in the Western, especially the North America and Western Europe. And these uh, models cannot address our own problems. For instance, when we talk about charcoal, we cannot talk the same language uh, in Africa can context the same way an American talks about charcoal. We cannot talk about the cow dung use the same way an American talks about it. So we need to consider about how we can think in the African context, our models that transpire our own problems, which we can invent and integrate in the assessment of our pro-environmental behavior uh, as far as sustainability uh, is concerned. And this marks the end of my presentation. I welcome you for discussion, comments, and other uh, constructive views. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, that was very informative and exciting. Uh, so let's take time to go through the questions, although I can see there is one so far, but people are still welcome to their questions. Hello. Uh, Hello. Someone speaking? Yes. I, yes. Yeah, I have a few areas um, to discuss. Um, to, I, I want the clarification on a few areas. Um, yeah, just what uh, your presentation, uh, first of all, I must commend um, your presentations and they were very wonderful. If you look at the environment, it's not an easy area to, to, to control or to manage. I can say we are all victims of um, impactfulling um, the, the sustainability of the environment, one way or the other. Um, if you look at the last bit of your this thing, uh, you said, what can we change? I like that bit of it because um, those are the things we can use by changing the, um, you know, the mode of consumption, engaging the management, and uh, make a total sensitization. Um, the areas that I want you to clarify, if there is any information about them, I will be very much pleased. Um, one, you're talking about the agricultural sector, because um, if you look at the agriculture, I think... Uh, these things are very important. We are looking about the reforestation and afforestation. But you may mention that agricultural sector contributes 73% of the world deforestation, which you quote as the uh, FA, FAO 2020 and Fosco Nova et al. 2012. So I'm a bit worried. Was there any statistics um, that they give as to how you know, reforestations are, are, are happening in the, in the world? That is the one part of it. And the second part, you also talk about the, the fuel wood and the charcoal collection. 
And uh, you made mention as the Africa as the leading producer of the global house uh, green, uh, greenhouse gas effect as eighty percent. Um, do we have any 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 breakdown of at, at the continental level worldwide? Because to me, yes, if you say charcoal, yes, it's, it's true. But how about the other sources of causing global global house gas effect? Was there any information that you gathered in the other part of the you know uh, the level in the worldwide? And the last bit of it is um the women contributing to the environmental sustainability than men. <laughs> I am I, I am a bit um, worried. You know how that is possible. Was there any evidences other than the, like uh, you know taking care of the environment? I, I'm saying whether there is any other other supportive evidence on this on this claim that um, the women they are more environmentally conscious than the men. Thank you. Can I go on, Mr. Daniel? Oh. Yes, sure. Uh, I think one question at a time is better, so you may go ahead. I did not get cut the last question on the of the last uh, 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 last speaker, but there is one question that has been asked within the group. I've just seen someone was asking if just agriculture alone contributes to seventy three percent of deforestations. What are the uh, way forward, or what can we do? In other ways, what can we do to a sustainable agriculture? There are different ways on how we can achieve this, um, but uh, we have, each country has been asked to develop a strategic and action plan uh, on how they can achieve uh, our climate mitigation, um, Issues. So one of the uh, strategies that can, can be done, the countries have been advised uh, to make for up of the climate variability. In most of the countries, there are meteorological agencies which tend to report more frequently on the direction of the climate. For instance, in my country, we have Tanzania Meteorological Agency that keeps on reporting the rate of the, the, the weather and the how it so. Um, farmers are advised to fall on this weather forecast so that they can, for instance, plant uh, crops that take short time to mature rather than depending on those which uh, will take longer. But also use of technology, such as in agriculture, instead of just using a lot of water, we can just opt to irrigate specific uh, independent uh, crops, or about use pipes, uh, where uh, this pipe will target each independent uh, crop, and this will not only serve water, but will also conserve the aspects of the environment. Um, these are some of the few, just to save time. Uh, but uh, it was, there is another question which was asked by uh, Beth. He, she was asking if there are some uh, research going on in Africa on multicultural uh, issues related to the environment. Uh, just to be specific, yes, they are, but there are very few studies. Uh, I've been looking or extracting some of the studies, but in Africa, to be honest, studies are very few, but there are some. Well, if you can remember, just previously, there was a presenter from University of Florida, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who, is, who is also making an investigation in Rwanda, uh, trying to see the community interaction with the environment, environmental attitude, environmental uh, knowledge. So this is one of the uh, relevant examples which I can just cite, but there are some others, maybe if you are to request, I will just share. But most of them are biased towards the Western Africa, most specifically in Nigeria, some others in South Africa, and some very few in the North uh, America. I've also found some in, uh, in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, 
but very few in the Eastern African countries. So this is a challenge to, to, to be discussed. Maybe, uh, Mr. Daniel, if you may ask the, la the, the last speaker to, yes. to, to the last question. I did not catch the question very well. Uh, the last question. Yes, uh, um, yes it's me. It's uh, Abdul Dame. Yes, I. Yes, the the last two questions that I had was uh, this. You know, you make a comparative studies on the fuel um, fuel who charcoal um, uh, use in Africa, claiming that uh, it's eighty percent. You know, we are con African is going to get uh, global gas, a uh, global house a uh, green gas effect. So I'm saying whether you have did you compare that charcoal with other um, sources of you know emission in the in the in the, in the world that's one aspect two oh thank you very much thank you thank you i think what uh, what, what you 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 got is not that the charcoal alone from africa contributes to 80 percent no uh, what i was saying is we are to consider charcoal production or food uh, uh, if we are to talk about the fu uh, fuel, uh, wood related uh, issues, uh, Africa contributes most significantly on comparison. This is followed by, by South America. South America is the second. But this is only one okay. aspect. But if we are to compare in terms of transportation, if we are to compare in terms of other uh, energy, the, the statistics are different. In, the, in this document, I've also tried to indicate, uh, like for instance, transportation contributes to 24%. This is one example. So each aspect was discussed independently. But I can just share with you a document that has uh, clarified each aspect and the percentage of how it, uh, it, it, it uh, contributes. For instance, if you, you get uh, the, the, the World Big Organizations, 2020 that has been recently produced, you can see the, the emissions from different regions and the which region, but particularly in tropical regions, we count the largest portions. So this is what I can say. But the report is exhaustive. You can just get one and read uh, in a effective way. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the, one, the, the other thing, the other thing you made mention about the um, women's contribution to the environment. Like women are more conscious in the environmental protection than uh, than men. Correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. So if you can uh, yes, yes. if you can give any supporting evidence on on, on this theory, because um, it worries me why women are so environmental conscious than uh, men. Thank you. Well, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, the resources are so many, but. Uh, as I have said, when we talk about uh, determinants of pro-environmental behavior, are so many. I have said there are external and internal factors. So if we consider gender as just one aspect, and I have said there are some exceptions. Uh, for instance, if you read uh, um, a recent uh, research by Chen, which was conducted in China, the story was different, whereby women we are less performing on environmental knowledge, but on environmental behavior, they were more uh, uh, environmental, uh, uh, we, many were more environmental conscious uh, than, uh, the, uh, many were more environmental conscious than women. But in some other studies, which I can also share uh, with you, uh, for instance, I have a study by Otto, uh, 2019, uh, indicates that women have higher uh, pro-environmental uh, uh, environmental concern as compared to men. There are different reasons that have been given, and as I have said, one of these is the personal values. And when you talk about the personal values, we have different. One of these, we can talk about the altruistic uh, aspect, and this is the care about the other people, uh, that women tend to score high on this aspect, but we have also care, that's the biospheric caring about the environment that women tend to score high. And these are the predictors also of uh, pro-environmental behavior. But they score less on egoistic value, and this is uh, selfishness or caring for oneself. So many will score high on egoistic, but score less on altruistic and uh, biospheric. So on comparison, 
uh, this will determine, this is just one aspect. There are different aspects just because of time, but this is just one example that uh, this uh, emotional response towards the environment, uh, women do better than men. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, we have um, one more question in the chat, which says, what do you think can be the best approach for creating policy coherence for environmental sustainability? And how do you think can people break the existing operation in silos? So, yeah, I think you know the silos. Uh, what I have indicated in my conclusion was just opening a debate of what we can think about the approach because the models we are mostly using are Western biased. All the models uh, measuring environmental attitude, the models for environmental behavior are Western biased. But as I have said, we cannot sit on the same table and talk, for instance, about uh, charcoal production cow dung use or firewood uh, 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 correction, and they have the same language with the US, with the UK, with uh, Netherlands or other uh, countries of the like. So we need to prioritize and invest more in research that will focus on cultural specific uh, terms in our context. And this uh, will unfold what do we need so after we have realized what are the, the uh, our, our uh, pressing issues, when you read the policy documents in most of the African countries, uh, we have identified the uh, main environmental pressing issues. In my country, for instance, we have seven of them. Some of these we have uh, issues of access to quality and, uh, and, and the sun water. We have issues of environmental pollution. We have issues of degradation, both uh, air, land, and the soil pollution, and other things of the like. We have seven of them. This, I've just mentioned a few. So we, you, you can go to some other countries. For instance, if you go in Rwanda, you can have issues maybe of transport. This is just an example. But you have some priorities. For instance, uh, in Rwanda, they have targeted that they have to reduce uh, 80%. Uh, of uh, greenhouse gases. But this, the country alone cannot attain this if individuals will keep their sedentary life, for instance, uh, using highly, uh, depending highly on, on, on private transport, uh, using charcoals and the other uh, highly emitting carbon. In Tanzania, we have targeted that we have to reduce 10% uh, of the greenhouse gases. But also this cannot be achieved if we do not collaborate and prioritize what needs to be uh, done first. In our uh, educational institutions, do we have the green curriculum that prioritizes and emphasizes on our priorities in the environmental issues? Because when we talk about the green curriculum used in Europe, used in the U.S., that cannot be relevant in our context because that green curriculum that is being used in Europe or uh, America, uh, we need to, uh, to, to adapt so that it can fit to our context. So these are the issues which we have to, to consider. Thank you very much. Um, it looks like so many people uh, are appreciating your talk and it's very interesting. While we are minding about the time I think uh, you may provide your email in the chat so okay. that the people who have, have further inquiries can contact you. And this brings us to the close of our seminar for today. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and I'd like to thank our speaker. And I hope uh, everyone will be back with us on the same day next week, we will be having a seminar about primates. So I, we, I would like to invite every one of you and yeah. let's hope to catch up by then. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joshua. Well done.